Okay, finally got around to starting doing the next uh, video, and I've got a lead sort of wrapped around the mic, that's not good. Sorry, just adjusting the microphone. And I think I'll lower it a little bit, because I think I'm picking up some random bits of noise of some sort. I'll just check the filters. Um, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Uh, so, we made a prefab, didn't we? Let's have a look at what else. We had a rigid body, we now have it so it basically it falls to the floor. On start up. What I might do is not have it quite so high. I'll just lower it down so it's kind of not quite touching the floor but near enough. In fact if I literally turn turn that into zero point five it should be pretty much okay. Now another thing I want to do is add another component and this time I'm going to add a script so you, you can put in the name of whatever you want as your script so player controller and see how it says new script because it doesn't have anything called player controller in existence in its sets of components it presumes it's a script so say new script create and add so that's now added it now if I go into the assets folder it's going to plunk it directly in the assets folder when you create it this way so I'm going to literally drag it into the script folder then to edit it I'm going to just double click it and that will open it in uh, Visual Studio and we can have a little look at this so when you make a new script in uh, Unity it creates a start uh, it adds a start method and an update method as it says here, start gets called as soon as the game starts, basically. And then this is called every single frame. So, inside here you can put things for initializing values and stuff like that if you want to. And in here you do things that actually have to happen once per frame. Now, up above there we can make some global variables. So if I make a public float speed and save it. Now any object that has this script attached now will actually have that variable available, say so speed. Now we can either hold, uh, hold down on the word and move to the right or left to change the values or can type in a value of say, I don't know, 7 as speed for now. So basically that, that's just a, a variable, it's irrelevant to everything unless you actually give it a context and kind of make it do something. So I'm going to go back into the code and kind of make it do something. Um, I think previous we did uh, some bits and pieces so if I do like um, I don't know there's a few different ways I could uh, address this I could look at my notes and kind of go through those properly uh, I'm gonna just do a vector yeah I'll, I'll keep it private vector 3 actually no I'm gonna do a Hmm. A float velocity x. Yeah. So this will be the vertical axis. I'm just going to play about with it for a second, and I'm going to do the whole if conditional. No, I won't. I'll do input dot get axis raw. I won't explain the differences between raw and non-raw for the moment. Ah, oh, that was it. Here we go. No smoothing filters applied, so it just it does it there and then instead of actually smoothing into it and out of it. Whereas get axis just smooths in and out to the value from whichever to the number. But I'm going to do vertical. Okay. So that's that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say okay velocity is equal to the axis times speed okay oh velocity x sorry I forgot about that now all this is saying is this is um, the direction and the speed of x now I could have done it this way actually in fact I probably would have been more useful. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to make this a bit more 
robust. Vector three. Oops, can't even spell. Vector three velocity. Okay, so if I say velocity dot x is equal to that. And velocity dot y would be equal to the input dot get axis raw. Uh, you know what, I should really be copy and pasting this off this one to be honest. Purely because it saves any typos. Let's get rid of that. I'd advise you to probably type it out because that way you'll get more, get kind of used to doing it. But I'm trying to keep these videos as short as possible. So there we go. So this will make the velocity x and y there. Then what we'll do is we'll do um, transform dot translate and we want a vector 3 translation so what we'll do is we'll do um, vector 3 dot 1 which basically does a, a 1 for the x, 1 for the y, 1 for the z okay. and then what I'm going to do is multiplied by velocity I have to spell that right. Let's add the uh, what's this? So what am I doing wrong here? Can you not? Does it have to be a? Hmm. It's correct, isn't it? I, that dot one does mean something, right? Oh, can't do vector 3 and vector 3. No way, they haven't overloaded the multiplier in that way. So basically you have to like do like that sort of thing. That's rather annoying. Ah, oh. I'm going to have to do it a little bit differently then. So new... Oh, I can't do it that way then. I'm just going to have to do translate new vector Right. Oh, I can do it that way, I'm just being mad. Ignore me. Velocity. Uh, multiply by time. Dot delta time. And the dog's having a little bit of a mad one. That might be a bit better. Okay, so I can do it that way, I'm just being a bit special today. Now let's see how that works, because theoretically the get axis will do the basis of whatever it the um, system has as its inputs. I think up, down, left, right is dealing with the axis. Uh, what time are we on now? Uh, we've got eight minutes. So I'm going to quickly save this and hopefully that's gone all through. I haven't really been able to concentrate too well since the dog's trying to play up. Um, but what we'll do is we'll press play and see if we get any errors for a start off. Don't seem to get any errors. I can jump. I can move. So. I can move from left to right and I can jump and I can squidge into the floor see how it's trying to go through the floor but it can't <laughs> so basically we can go bump we can go left and we can go right and then we can kind of try and go into the floor so it's actually working it's not quite working how I'd want it to work but it's it's something it's a start so I think we'll end that here and we'll fiddle about and work with the actual stuff uh, later. I'm thinking, yeah, we can do this nicely. I know what's up with this. Basically because this, actually the Z axis instead of the Y, even though it is really Y, but we're working on 3D, so the Z would be actually the one that he dealt with for that. So let's just try that. Let's stop that and start it again just quickly. It's just a quick tester. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so backwards, forwards, left and right. So it's the horizontal and vertical axes need to be switched around. Um, basically, it thinks vertical as going forward and backward, by the way. So that's a bit weird. 
if you're doing 2D it's a lot easier because it would just be X and Y. Um, let's save that. Make sure I've got that right because that's a bit weird. It's just finding your way in the space. It, I'm used to having Z up in the air. So left goes left, right goes right, forward goes forwards, backwards goes backwards. There we go. We actually have a working basic controller now. Okay, so that took, what, 10 minutes odd, so we'll end it here, and I'll work on some more bits and pieces for it in a minute. So, so that's working okay. Left, right. Now, we're bearing in mind we're looking at the left-hand screen, because this is rotated incorrectly, backwards. So, if we look at the left screen, left, right, forwards, backwards. See, nice and simple. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.